Welcome to the semi-final episode of my version of Portrait Artist of the Year. Since this is my semi-final episode, I wanted to do things a little different. I happened to be scrolling through Instagram the other day and I found an interesting thing, an art challenge. So I thought, what a great way for the semi-final episode to happen. Uh, the art challenge is being put on by an Instagram artist. She's a really talented artist. And the challenge is to paint one of her characters in your own style. So here's how it's going to go. The artist is Annie Steg, and I'm going to be painting her as one of her own characters, Princess Evangeline. It's for her art challenge number three. All right, let's paint. Here you see Annie Steg's character, Princess Evangeline. Her challenge is for artists to recreate her character in their own style. She says feel free to change anything, including colors and pose. Then post the finished painting on Instagram with her painting behind it. Just search for Annie Steg on Instagram and you'll find the challenge details. Welcome to my channel, Shelley J. Cox and SJC Sport Couture. This is where art meets fashion. Okay. Since the art challenge is to paint Princess Evangeline in your own style, I could not help but think Annie Steg would make an amazing Princess Evangeline. So that's what I'm going to do. I started by sketching the main facial features with a, an erasable colored pencil. And then I'm going back over the background elements in my black Sharpie. I checked that all my facial features were in the correct place by using my proportion tool against my reference material. So I'm thinking about this painting uh, as if it were in Photoshop in layers. So I wanted to put the background layer in first. So when I start painting the portrait, I can just paint. And here you see me laying in this um, large black area with black acrylic. I wanted it to be able to dry quickly so that I could start layering oil paint on top of it right away. It looks like Princess Evangeline is in a forest at night with the moonlight shining on her. I'm hoping to capture this same mood in my painting as well. Annie has a very uh, fairy tale-esque style and I wanted to capture some of those elements in the background while still painting this portrait in my style. I'm spending some time putting in some more detailed background elements, uh, more detailed than I usually do, but I will be deconstructing them later in the painting process. Looks like a forest at nighttime is starting to emerge. I think I'm on the right track. I'm putting a lot of black and white elements surrounding the face of the portrait. This way the central face will be the focal point. That's where all the color and detail will be, which will draw your eye right to her face.
All right, I pre-mixed my palette and now I'm going to start with the eye. I'm going to be painting this portrait in a modified, if you will, selective start. If you're interested in learning more about the selective start method, you can read about it in the book A La Prima 2, written by artist Richard Schmidt. I'll put the details in the description. I want to be sure I capture the amazing beautiful blue eyes of the Princess Evangeline that Annie Steggs painted here. So I'm going to be pushing the blue in Annie's eyes much more saturated than I would normally just so that I can mimic her character. So Annie has a very fair skin and in order to create a good degree of contrast, I'm really going to push the shadow areas. If you're liking the video and you're getting some value, hit that thumbs up button for me. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so I know you like the videos and I can keep making them. And ring the bell and that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So I'm working in oil paints. I have a palette of titanium white, Windsor yellow, yellow ochre pale, cad red light, quinacridone magenta, phyllo turquoise, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. I'm painting on these pro panels by Da Vinci. It's the ultra smooth gesso panel. It's uh, put together with New Zealand cradled pine. It's really smooth. I just love painting on it. Mine is 14 by 18 inches. So let me know if you have any questions, if there's any videos that you'd like to see me make, if there's anyone from YouTube or Instagram that you think you'd like to see me paint, just hit me up in the uh, email. It's in my description. And uh, yeah. So just watch me paint for a bit and I'll check back in.
So I had quite a challenge here with the mouth. I ended up using two different reference material photos. Uh, the first photo for the upper part of the face had a large smile on it. I wanted to close the mouth a bit more and the second reference photo had the mouth closed. So I had to adjust the upper face, the cheeks, and the smile to fit the closed mouth. So it was a bit of a challenge, but I think in the end it ended up working. So I finished my first pass over the face. I'm gonna take a break from the face and move into some more fun, relaxed elements like the antlers. And then I'm gonna have a little fun with getting some of the background done. And I'm gonna play a cute little fairy song. So you can see that while I paint some of the background. I mean, she is a fairy princess after all, so it's perfect. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I'm going to get into painting some of the hair. You may notice that I'm using my left and right hand. Uh, sometimes in situations where I don't have to be too precise, I'm more comfortable painting with my left hand, especially if it's on the left side. And 
just to make sure you understand the shadows that are coming into play here, the light source is at the top left of the painting. So it's coming down across the forehead, hitting the left side of the nose and cheek, and then falling gently onto the lips. So I have to keep this light source in mind as I'm painting each of the curls in her hair. I want to make sure I get good 3D form and lots of contrast, but also following the pattern that that light source would create. Still working in layers, if you will. Uh, so that I get the background painted around some of the other more foreground elements. So I looked at several of Annie's paintings and figured out which of the elements from those paintings I would put in the background. I see that she puts butterflies in her paintings a lot, uh, dragonflies, uh, there's often tree branches and flowers and vines, and I've got two butterflies here and I thought it'd be cute if the butterflies were bringing a beautiful light blue satin ribbon up to tie into her hair. This just seemed like a really good fairy tale type of element to put in the painting. So I didn't want the ribbon to stand out value-wise too much from the hair, but I also didn't want it to be the same color. So I feel like the light blue satin type ribbon color is going to work and blend just enough and it works perfect.
One thing that I struggle with while I'm painting is not getting too tight. And since I started this painting with an underdrawing and putting in some of the elements with the Sharpie, uh, I was kind of starting off in a tight manner. So I'm reminding myself here to loosen up. I feel like I painted that first butterfly pretty tightly. So the second one's a bit more painterly. And I am going to go in and deconstruct them so it'll help. So my princess is wearing an ivory lace top. So here you can see me getting into that element now. So I'm adding some flower details down in the left corner. I feel like it's going to help balance out where the pink butterfly is in the upper right. And then you're coming across with all the pink tones in her skin. And then you have those flowers down in the bottom corner. I think it just provides a good composition, color-wise especially.
time for my Prince Frog. He is really fun. I found him in one of Annie Stegg's paintings. Uh, he wasn't looking up like I have painted him here. I really wanted him to be looking up towards Annie as if perhaps he was thinking a kiss may turn him into her Prince Charming. All right, deconstruction time. I'm going to work on putting some really fun splats of paint and there I'm blowing the splats with a straw just to spread them out. I ended up turning them into like some wild looking flower type things, but that was a lot of fun. I don't usually uh, use a straw to blow the paint around like that. It was the first time I've ever done it. I think I may do it again, it was pretty cool. And these little specks are my uh, take on as if uh, it was a magical force surrounding her. It is a magical forest at night after all. Okay, 
When I stepped back and I looked at her skin tone, I realized there was just way too much red. There was way, it was too saturated. I wanted her face to have this moonlit glow to it. And it just looked like she had been out in the sun at the beach or something, I don't know. I was, I don't know what I was thinking while I was painting it. I don't know why I didn't see it earlier on, but the skin tone was just way off. I believe I'm heading in the right direction now and I'm gonna work over the entire face. So it's almost as if this is the second painting stage because everything uh, underneath is already dry. So I ended up putting a layer of retouch varnish across just the face so that I could go back in and work in this new skin tone layer. I also realized that it was a little bit too painterly. There was too much brush stroke. I, I just really wanted her to have a princess, beautiful, smooth, glowy skin. So as I'm working back over it the second time around, I'm really smoothing out my brush strokes, which I don't normally do, but I felt in this situation, it just worked better. Now I'm starting to see that moon-kissed glow on her skin. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. And check out Portrait Artist of the Year Shelley J Style episodes 1, 2, and 3 on my channel. Since this is the semi-final episode, uh, next comes the grand finale, and I'm going to have quite a surprise for you on the next one, so be sure you look out for that one. I'm really liking seeing your comments on the videos. It's very helpful. Let me know any of your thoughts. I really appreciate it. So here she is, Annie Stegg as Princess Evangeline in the Annie Stegg Art Challenge number three. Thanks for watching.